Hey, listen, we got to talk about Raw. What are you doing over there? What? What are you doing back there? Pay attention, dude. You want to do the Raw report? No. Why? Did you watch it? Yeah. But it wasn't very good. Let's be honest here. It was not a good show. It was very labor-intensive to get through at times. It was much worse last week. Do you disagree? Week. It yeah. was much worse was much last worse week. much worse last week. Very. I didn't, you know what? I didn't almost well, fall asleep one time this week. Co- you know, Convoy's right. I hate to say it, Brian. Convoy's right. I know he's right there. He's he's right now jumping up and down. He's pointing his finger at you. And I think he may actually be correct because here we are back to stupid comedy again. You got Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows out there. Doc Gallows, both of them put nice on their uh, on their cojones, you know. Come on. You know, the only thing I should have remembered from it's Doc Gallows good last brothers. night. The only thing. See, anytime you think something is, you know, you, it it's, doesn't bother you at all, all of a sudden it becomes, well, it's mid-card or it's the good brothers. What do you expect? You know, people say that to you. You continue to freak out. Bro, hold on a second. Did you watch what were those shows that the Good Brothers and Rocky did? I probably should know because Rocky's coming on the show today. Oh my god! What were those things? It's the Good Brothers. They did comedy involving putting ice on their testicles after someone kicked them in the nuts. That that is what sent you over the edge. That didn't send me over the edge again. Talking shop mania. That's right. yes. Didn't That's you right. also like? Didn't you make an appearance on one of those? I think I did actually. What a good brother you I don't are, remember. brother. Yeah. This person says it was the worst show ever. Hey, listen. I I can't force anybody to do anything. It's one of the problems I've encountered in life. But, man, I'd like to make all of you go back six months, and let's just start watching six months old Raws again, and then get back to me. I'd like to make everybody go back and watch uh, October and November NXT 2.0, and then get back to me. Nobody's going to do it. Oh, God. But uh, this show is noticeably better. It's still just a show. Why should they do that, Brian? No one says NXT's improved anyway. You're the only guy who wants to watch it, and everybody makes fun of you for it. That's true. That is true. That is a lie. And even DJ was like, you know what? They did bring Nikki Cross back to just being her old gimmick again. They did take the superhero costume off of her and the stupid mask. And now she's her old character. You know, that is better than when she was almost a superhero. Well, that's when the she silver... was Nikki A.S.H., which was the stupidest name since. So, silver lining in that dark cloud last night with her coming back to being crazy ass Nikki Cross, which she should be. Hey, we listen, sanity. Nikki is what we need. It opened up with uh, the usual deal, a long promo leading to a long match. But you know what? It was a good match. You could tell me Finn Balor and Carl Anderson wasn't good. And let me tell you, the end of this show, the end of this match, was flat out great. I don't care what anybody says. If you don't like it, do your own show. So, Brian likes to be manhandled by women. Dominic, who, by the way... Does like to be manhandled by women. Remember when Dominic was going to turn heel and everybody was like, oh, just get rid of the guy. Like, it's not going to help. There's nothing you can do with Dominic. Bro, he's miles better as a heel he's miles better as the guy who thinks he's better than eddie guerrero and man that guy gets heat this guy jumps up on the apron and then aj styles yanks him off damian priest wipes out aj styles gallows wipes out damian priest and then rhea ripley shoves this giant luke gallows into the post and he stumbles his way back and she gave this dude the most legit held him up there body slam on the floor you ever seen like this was this was her moment and uh and that was awesome so then of course dom distracts the ref uh ria gives the low blow to anderson balor crawls on top gets the pin dude i don't want to hear this wasn't good because this was really good it was awesome the body slam was awesome the rest of it was all right oh this was good and this dom I like this heel, Dominic. <laughs> I like it. Are you talking about Dom or are you talking about Bro, Eddie Guerrero? This Dominic should the go new back. The Eddie Guerrero. Why haven't they gone back and noted that Dominic is the son of Eddie Guerrero? I don't care what they did in storyline. They had that storyline for a while. If there's one thing that could make his dad want to fight him, it's him telling him, you're not even my dad. Eddie was my dad. 
you're just some guy that adopted me or something. Oh, man. Something like that. They need to go along with And there's even fans in the crowd holding up the Eddie is your father sign. Like, fans remember this storyline from 15, 20 years ago or whatever. I don't know. He may get a lot more mileage out of, let's see what happens. He keeps dragging Eddie Guerrero's name in the mud by saying that he's better than him. Let's see how much he, he can get for that first. We had a long Ms. Gargano segment where Gargano still wants Ms. to reveal the truth. Uh, Ms. says, I don't even know what the truth is. The actual truth comes out. Some weird Ohio thing going on here. Truth in his hometown beats the Miz. Which never would have happened with Vince. Not that it really matters that much. But uh, long story short, Gargano has told Miz, if he doesn't tell the truth about Dexter Loomis next week, he's going to tell the truth. We had a segment where Damage Control beat up Candice LeRae. And uh, Gargano was so concerned that he actually does a, a, a talking segment later and then a match. That was bizarre. Johnny Goodhusband. We had a segment with Chad Gable and Otis to set up a match with Elias later. Austin Theory beat Ali in 12 minutes uh, with the A-Town down. Uh, this was, by the way, three straight matches with distraction finishes. And the, the, uh, the streak of distraction finishes only ended when uh, Omos beat four men in a one-minute handicap match that, uh, boy, I don't, I don't, I'm not into this Braun Strowman Omos feud. No. But hey, listen, I'm not into it, but they're doing nothing wrong. It's like they got one giant who's killing dudes. They got another giant who's even bigger that's killing dudes. And they're saying if you watch this show, they're going to fight each other. That's pro wrestling, dude. That's way better than the old days of, hey, let's, uh, let's you know, whatever. I actually don't think that Vince would have beaten Omos, but usually his his booking philosophy is let's beat both these guys for four straight weeks and then buy the show to see which one of these is is less of a loser than the other. At least it's two giants killing everybody, and we'll see who the king giant is in Saudi Arabia. Elias beat Chad Gable. Ten minutes. I don't want to hear it. It's a good match. It's Chad Gable's awesome. Elias did a good job. Hmm. Interference uh, distracted. It's actually it backfired and led to uh, Elias getting the win over Chad Gable. Heels beat him up afterwards. Riddle makes a save, so we get a tag match coming out of it, which, unlike in the old days, will be delivered because hmm. they actually follow up on stuff now. We had a JBL promo, and then Baron Corbin versus Johnny Gargano went 14 minutes, which was way too long for this match. Whatever you want to say about Corbin, bro, his heat is the most boring thing on the planet. Although, I actually did not almost fall asleep during this match because Gargano's very good. And uh, I don't know what they're doing with Gargano, but he's like, he's doing the clown gimmick and he's messing around with JBL's hat. And so JBL beats his ass and then he gets pinned. And the you announcers know, are like, you know, he, he uh, brought that all on himself. And as a viewer, he brought that all on himself. This was all his fault, and he was beaten. Not a fan of this, uh, what they're doing with Gargano. Let me, let me get this straight, too. It, NXT is single-A baseball, or are the Indies and NXT single-A baseball? I thought he said triple-A baseball. Dave okay. said single-A. It doesn't matter. The point is, NXT is the minor leagues. That's what JBL says. Mm. Which is okay. funny because uh, Baron Corbin was, in fact, in NXT for quite a while, actually. He in fact, Russell. he was more over in NXT than he ever was on the main roster. I'll tell you that much. Was that sad? The people making drawings of his sad torso as he was wrestling Bull James at the time? Then we had the announcement that Lesnar is going to be back next week. And then the main event was Bailey and Bianca Belair. They went 23 minutes. Pretty good match. And at the end, the uh, you know the women outside are trying to interfere. The ref's about to throw them out. And suddenly this body flies off the post and wipes everybody out, including the referee. Turns out it's Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross ends up giving Bianca the spinning neck breaker. Bailey pins her here in this non-title match. And then uh, Nikki also attacks Bailey afterwards. So, you know, I don't think it's politically correct in 2022 to call a person crazy, but she's doing the crazy gimmick. 
she's no longer a superhero in training or whatever, or almost a superhero. She is Nikki Cross, Wild Lady, and it looks like we're going to have a three-way for the title, which I'm fine with, by the way, since we had the one-on-one match in a stip match with a finish. So if Bailey's going to get another shot, may as well be a three-way. And then you have the added intrigue, if this is intrigue to you. Will Bianca lose the belt without being beaten? I guess we'll find out. But I thought the show was fine. I would not say that it was a great show, but it had a great thing on the show. It had some good matches on the show. The storylines all make sense. They're slow building a lot of stuff. And it was uh, good, I thought. Did it fire you up to watch uh, Riyadh, Saudi Arabia's Crown Jewel coming your way? Bro, I've never been excited to watch Crown Jewel, and no one ever has. So, you know, they could could announce that, you know, they've they've cloned Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart, and they're going to have another match in Saudi Arabia. I still don't want to watch it. I don't know. We saw the first Shawn Michaels have his last one there, and that was enough. Dude, he was the best guy in that match by miles. And that says a lot. That was sad. I totally forgot this story until just now. And it happened when I was a kid. And so I think there's a decent chance that it could have been like a dream. Yes. And so, like, I was chopping the tree. And uh, I just remember looking up. And all of a sudden, like, this was a weird thing. I remember I looked up and there were Ewoks in the tree. That is definitely a dream. And I saw it coming down. (laughs) And all of a sudden, I was like, I woke up later. (laughs) This is the weird thing he said. Yeah, it is. well, it is weird. weird about it. It is weird. There were Ewoks in the tree. Yeah, that's weird. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of the Brian and Vinny show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.